Today we're working on the Diamond C trailer, addressing the brakes. This winter, this trailer will be three years old and we use it a fair amount. I need to do a long-term review on it. There's certain some things that I've been disappointed with. These brakes are one of them. So we'll just take a look at these. I, this is my first time really working with trailer brakes. So I don't know if this is normal wear, abnormal wear, but three, three year old trailer, um, brand new trailer, lipid axles. And this drum is pretty well, not sure how you can see, there's a huge, huge ridge there. It's probably hard to tell. wear here pretty normal from what I've seen from a pad style disc but these brakes have always been weak never really worked great I don't know if it's a wiring issue or these issues I did have some of these replaced under warranty and from what I gathered from that warranty process is this electromatic was rusty and it was not attaching to the, the drum like it was supposed to you can see here how uneven wear huge huge lip right there and as far as the pad wear a little chunk taken out I mean it looks like these brakes been working but like I said first I really worked with these so I'm going to replace all these a lot more expensive than I wanted it to be I looked on eTrailer.com and we're about 400 bucks for a Dexter easy or never adjust these are about 200 bucks for the outer hub and for the whole trailer we're looking at about 1500 bucks the new axle is like a thousand or 1100 bucks so we're nearing the price of a, a whole whole new axles which is crazy but uh i got the, the credit card notification 1775 dollars for all the parts for these. Hopefully that was everything. And uh, we're gonna put it back together and see if the brakes work better. We're gonna redo the wiring. And uh, might have to do more than just this for wiring, but we'll, we'll see how that goes. But yeah, let me know if this is normal wear for these. Let me know if these are supposed to leave grooves in here. If that's normal. You know, I mean, as far as mileage on these, I mean, 10,000 miles, 15,000 miles max. Um, is that normal wear? Should I be doing more maintenance, less maintenance? As far as the rest of the trailer goes, um, these fenders I'm not super happy with. You can see where the tire's been rubbing in the past. Um, underneath here, they're super rusty. Not super impressed with the the powder coat system process. Not super happy with this flat bar design. Suspension's held up really well. I don't see anywhere in our suspension. I've seen that happen before where these will waller out, have issues. I, I don't see any excessive wear there. Um, but I mean, certainly the rust is disappointing. Well, we'll catch up when we get the new parts here. Let's talk about price real quick. When I first picked up this trailer, I paid $6,500 for this. This trailer is now worth about $10,000. Maybe not, maybe even $12,000 if I buy new. But uh, like I said, the components here, we're looking at almost $2,000 for the brakes. Uh, you know, that's a third of the value of what I paid for this trailer. So that's crazy in and of itself. When you think everything's doubled in price, it's not as crazy. Uh, but uh, it's, uh, it seems kind of crazy. Three years into a brand new trailer, I've put in a third of the cost I paid for it into repairs. And we've got a couple other repairs to work on too. I've got some stuff on order. I ordered 
I'm really happy with PJ's website. They have a parts ordering and I ordered their blue um, cold temperature cable. So this obviously drug on the ground still works. Didn't even break through the wire, but we're gonna put a new one of these on there. Another spot here where it bore through. Gonna put a new. Okay, we got one side done. Got the right hand side. Got our brake wires reconnected. I left these ends open so I can put testers in there, see how much voltage we're getting. I am concerned that the electrical coming to these brakes is incorrect, so that will be a good way to test that. And I can put some heat shrink over it when I'm done. Got these all done, grease them up, use the easy grease. This is my first time doing these, so hopefully I've got them my bearings tension tight correctly um here's our old part so we've got our old lug nuts i think from the dealership they over torqued those on or the repair shop so those things were super cross threaded um these caps have been fine um there's the old outer bearing we've got um we reused one of these one of those i had to get a new one in here um so the only thing we reused was castle nut and then that washer there, and then the um, cotter pin and everything else is brand new. So super easy. I guess we did reuse these five nuts, bolt that on, put the inner bearing in, put the seal in, put a little bit of grease on there, and then slap that on, and then put on the castle nut, tighten it up, use the big wrench to tighten it down all the way loosen it up a little bit and then like i said we filled it up with grease with the milwaukee grease gun and uh, it actually takes quite a bit of grease in there so those are all greased up those are good to go ready to put on tires ready to put on our end caps we've got these new caps new lug nuts new grease covers and there is our um two outer bearings for the other side so we are putting all new Dexter components on this Diamond C Lippert axle. Goodbye, Lippert crap. True rice. So that's the right hand. See how dodgy that is. All new parts. Three years, 15,000 miles. Is that normal wear? Somebody please tell me. New, new, new. Nice and shiny new. Oh, that's the other thing. These things seem to have, there's something holding that in there pretty good. Just wants to move that way. These guys, a lot more up and down movement. Not sure if that's normal, not sure if that's wear right there, whatever. But out with the old, in with the new. I'm going to get underneath there with a screwdriver and tighten down our shoes so that they've got a little bit of drag on them. Okay, I just tested our brakes by using this emergency brake disconnect, removed this, pulled this out. Three of these. Uh, those two and this front one was just over seven volts. This one was just over eight volts. Not sure why there's a difference there. Then I hooked up the truck to it um, without the emergency disconnect pulled. And at five, we were running three volts. And at eight, we were running eight volts um, consistently on all, all the tires. So I could hear them actuating. I'm feeling pretty confident. Um, we did miss eight lugs, so we're got a guy running to grab those right now. But I'm going to heat shrink these and get all of our electric connections taken care of. And then we're gonna torque down the lug nuts and uh, burnish the brakes. So the procedure for that will be 
to drive down the road and just consistently apply the brakes um, on and off until we start getting them to grab. We want to in introduce a ton of heat into these, just like we burnished in the brakes on the work truck there. On that separate video, we're going to be burnishing in these brakes. Hopefully that will do better for us. Um, both of these, for whatever reason, I believe that the mechanic, the service shop that did the warranty work for the Diamond C, took both of these off and replaced both of these. I'm gonna have to go look through my notes, but interesting that both the sills on these had failed. They had come separated from the hub and both of these brake assemblies were covered in grease. So that is an attributor to brakes not working. And I think that was, uh, if not fully, at least partially due to an improper or, or poor install. So we got all of our new sills installed. So hopefully we've got a good three to five years of service life out of these this repair where we don't have any issues and hopefully we've got some good breaks in that time as well. Just got back from a test drive with the Diamond C and I have to say this is the best the brakes have ever worked on this trailer. Took it to the car wash and got it cleaned up while we were working on maintaining it. All the brakes by the end of our test were locking up even on one and a half gain. Our temperature that I saw the highest was around 300 on the back side of the backing plate, it's the best place to see that. <clears throat> Cooled off a little bit, we're at 225. Glad I got back from the car wash, washed everything up, cleaned it up pretty good. I still need to reset these fenders. They're bone out pretty good. We got some rocks in there. We've got a separate video on that, but they're getting close to touching the inner fender wall on the tires but i got these shy tires all shined up these two on this side these caps came off and they were all covered in grease so i got some um wheel degreaser cleaner and clean off all the grease on these those are all shined up and looking good we got all new hubs in here we got all new brake assembly and took it out for our burnishing process ran it from six to ten um and and i kind of went back and forth as it cooled down i could i could go back up again um but by the end of my drive one and a half was locking up these brakes with an empty trailer so i am really excited about that before with an empty trailer i would have it on 10 gain and it still wasn't locking up the brakes so we've got these things looking good um, when this thing's empty this is going to have to be at one gain and then when we're loaded up i'm hoping we're between five and eight gain and then we've got some room to, to upward growth on this but um, I'll clean up this trailer looking good um, kind of got it all shined up and new it's uh, about three years old now and uh, like I said between 10 and 15,000 miles so not sure how well you can see 
used tires, but these ones are all cleaned up and looking good too. Do have some scuffs on those, missing some paint, but these, I really like these black wheels on this. The uh, wiring, these Dexter hubs have this little clip in here, which lets you kind of hold that in there. So that kind of keeps it out of the suspension and uh, you shrunk everything. I just used one tube for both of those. They're obviously not making contact, but I am really impressed, really happy with this. And uh, for the first time in owning only this trailer, the brakes are actually working really, really good. That said, I have yet to put a load on it. So we'll see once we put a load on how she does. But let's kind of talk about the story. So I bought this trailer in December of 2020, paid 6,500 bucks for it. I've got other videos talking about that. And brought the trailer home. I was not aware about the burnishing process. Started using it that next spring, March, April, May. Bought my E35, started putting it to use. And the brakes just didn't really seem great. Took it in for warranty early that summer. And the trailer company I bought it from sold to another trailer company. So that trailer company handled the warranty process. Wasn't super happy with the the experience I had there. Ended up paying, I, I, I guess, in 500 bucks for them to replace the magnetic um, piece in there. So they replaced it, said it was rusty. I've got photos of that. Maybe I can throw up on the screen, but put it, they, they put it back together. I had to pay them three or four months later, finally got approval from Diamond C for a refund. So that trickled down and finally made its way back to me. So I finally did get a you know free warranty repair of that side. And I tried burnishing the brakes then. They never really did well. Um, they've always just been really weak in the last six months, a year, they've, they've almost been non-existent. So finally broke down, spent $1,775 today to get everything back up and going. All new parts. I was thinking this was a Lippert problem. So I just, Lippert had some, um, issues with some of their, their products and, uh, recalls with it, stuff like that. So I just, all new Dexter, never just brakes. Dexter hubs, everything was Dexter, $1,775, put it together, really easy install, really easy setup, adjusted the brakes. Today, everything's good. But one thing I found out today was, I swear the axles, the, the left-hand side that the warranty repair replacement took care of, both of the seals on those failed. They came out of the hub, and when I put, removed the hub, the seal stayed on the axle. So I don't think those seals were installed correctly. I have a feeling that this spring, when we went through and did our maintenance and re-greased all of our hubs, I have a feeling that that pushed grease into the brakes, which made our brakes even worse. So owner mistake, not burnishing the brakes. I I can't know for certain whether the, the trailer and the trailer repair company that did the repairs I, I feel like they didn't do them right, but I can't say that for 100%. But what I do know is 100% that seal failed. We got grease in both those brakes. Obviously, those brakes aren't going to work with grease covering them. The odd thing is, is that side didn't have any signs of grease. The other side, the right-hand side, with the two missing, uh, when we, we serviced at the spring, they, one of the caps or two of the caps was missing, and they slunk some grease all over. Those axles had grease on them. But anyways, potato, potato, whatever. But I'm excited now that this trailer has finally got some good brakes on it. I can't say whether it's Dexter versus Lipper thing. I can't say whether it's my repair versus the service technician's repair. I can't say whether I got bad components from Diamond C. I can't say whether or not, I mean, for all I know, this axle from Lipper was sitting on a shelf for 12 months, 18 months, a year, two years, who knows? Maybe they had rusty components. I really don't know. Could have been the three months between December when I bought it to March when I started really using it. There's a million things that could have caused this. I burnished the brakes this time. I'm, they're hooking up great. I think that's gonna make a big difference. 
I'm really glad that I bought all the components. It was really hard to, to swallow that price. You know, for $2,000, $2,500, I could have bought whole new axle assemblies. So that's just nuts that I spent all of that on repair components. But I know it's all good. Got them all wired in, tested the wiring. That's all working good. I'm hoping that this trailer is trouble free for the next year or two. Um, obviously we'll service, you know, the, the bearings, grease them, but the brakes should be really good to go. And uh, we'll update you when that comes time. But overall, this time to see trailer has been a great investment. Um, you know, it's hard to drop $2,500 in labor materials into this trailer right now. I'm not paid 6,500 bucks for it. But the fact of the matter is the trailer's probably worth ten, twelve thousand dollars now if I were to buy it new. So parts, repair parts have gone up. Trailer costs have gone up because the repair parts have gone up. So it I've got to maintain this thing, keep it on the road, so it's just a cost of doing business. It sucks, but it's been a good trailer. Um, aside from some rusty stuff and the brake issues, I've really been happy with the trailer. I do wish I had the, the LPX instead of the EQT. The LPX is a little bit heavier duty I, and I the extra channel uh, height I think would make a big difference, but uh, no issues with the frame or anything like that so far. So I haven't had any structural issues. Um, these fenders are super annoying. Filling up with rocks. We got this one right here. Taking those off once. I need to take them off again and just get the rocks cleaned out, put the fenders, reset the fenders, put them back on. Um, it's just kind of a maintenance component. Um, for the first time in the last three years, I've really, I used to, I've pressure wise it a couple times. Our crew's really kind of been the one running this trailer. So I haven't been using it as much, but um, today's the first time I've really deep cleaned this thing for a long, long time and it's looking new again. So. Hopefully that's not too much rambling. Hopefully that's some good information. <laughs> Give you some context. <clears throat> got a little bit of a nasty throat. I don't know if I've got flu or allergies or what, but my voice has kind of been gone. So I'm sure you noticed that's in the video, but look forward to future videos from us. Um, thanks for watching Thrifty Garage and we'll see you on the next one.